were sort of horizontal. We were actually in our cruise planning for tomorrow, um, sort of discussing that those might have been sills as this sort of uh, seamount was kind of in, in placed incrementally over time as it was growing up with sort of new lava flows pouring out. Um, and maybe we'll get some better perspective on that when we're looking at some of our structure from models uh, mapping. Um, but we were hoping to see gradients in uh, the benthic communities uh, living on the bottom. And uh, for sure the most striking thing was um, really the corners of these dikes and sills is where we saw lots of uh, crinoids and corals really taking advantage of the turbulence uh, on those corners to, to live. And, and really they were colonizing all the substrates that were you know bare rock exposed. They were uh, really taking advantage of that, whereas a lot of the sand, um, uh, not so much in between. And right around 1100 meters, is where we started seeing uh, a bunch more corals, which was pretty exciting. Um, and they seem to really peak around 1,100 to 1,000 meters. Um, and why that is, uh, we're not, not so sure. Maybe um, when we go back and look at the data, we'll have some better sense for, for what might have caused that. Um, but then we kept going up slope and sort of as we were approaching the top, we were expecting to see more more rocky features, but it ended up being pretty sedimented, uh, sort of towards the top of the ridge, uh, but we didn't make it to the top of the seamount. Um, and so in the dive planning for tomorrow, it looks like we might try to drop down at the very tippy top and see, okay, is this is this really cool or no? Like, do we see more rocks or more life oftentimes at the tops of these ridges, just as like uh, today when we saw at the tops of uh, the dikes and sills, there were lots of things taking advantage of that for feeding. So hopefully we'll have some cool life on the top and we can sort of spiral around uh, the top of that seamount to basically build a, a mountaintop model uh, with our 3D photogrammetry and perhaps then drop down the other side of the ridge, trying to pick another steep feature and. Uh, see if there's also something cool over there. Uh, yeah, so we've collected video, video and photos from from today's dive, and those will be used to reconstruct that to create this dive virtually and bring back with us to Puerto Rico to to analyze and uh, try to dig into a little bit more of what's going on here. So um, overall, pretty interesting dive, especially that yeah. middle part with all of the dikes and sills and yeah. corals. I think my highlight from the dive, though, was that gulper eel we got to see. <laughs> Absolutely, that was really fun. That was a cool find, and it was sort of right at the it was right at the shift change. Wasn't yeah, it, it was. Yeah. It was right after the, uh, the yeah. start of our shift. To the viper eel. So maybe we yeah. we used up yeah. all of our our luck with the gulper eel. <laughs> and then it was really kind of cool. I know the early shifts all what ended up being a tree, but we didn't yeah. know what it was. Yeah, yeah. So it faked us out. That. <laughs> I was How could I forget the tree? That <laughs> yeah. was, uh, there was a lot of just excitement there. It's like, is that a whalebone? It sort of kind of looked like a jawbone of yeah. a whale. Yeah, yeah, I was watching in the lounge, and I was like, whoa, is that a whale yeah. rib? Uh, I think we're going to... minutes there, so I was like, we need to highlight that. Yeah, yeah. We, we're going to make a mean uh, model out of that yeah. one for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you once all again, the Nautilus crew they, they faked out by a tree. A, they did promise to have the model up you know, by tomorrow so we can 3D print it. So tomorrow I may have a 3D printed, you know, tree here. Uh, you make yourself a nice little paperweight, uh, exactly. coffee stirrer. <laughs> Because we do have 3D printers right here in the ship, so you can take, you know, the stuff that we do, the 3D models we can, and then now with added manufacturing, we can, you know, create 3D representations at, of what we see here. Yeah, absolutely. Super we cool. Thanks for reminding us <laughs> in the log. <laughs> that was that was crucial. We've um, we have a viewer who has uh, let us know when we joined not our YouTube. So EV Nautilus joined YouTube December 2nd, 2011. Right. Oh. So 2011. So 12, yeah. So, yeah, long time. Before um, the YouTube bang came back, they were already there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next dive is tomorrow morning at eight or nine. Uh, I wasn't down at the meeting. Oh, so we, I, we're up here on watch, so we we missed the meeting. I, I was actually see. just down there helping with the planning, uh, and I'm not sure if they had a, a time that we discussed. We were too focused on where to go and what yeah. to do. Um, so. 
Tune web in in the morning, yeah. sometime the tomorrow morning. Um, the website will be updated, so go check out YouTube uh, Nautilus Live or our Instagram page, and we'll put a dive alert out. Um, and then we have a question, Simon Thomas, I don't know if you guys are too busy, let us know or not, but this question is, how do we launch or drop the ROVs in the water? So if you guys are busy, let me know. But. Yeah, I can uh, I can take that one there. So uh, we have a, a, a deck team on board. It, it usually consists of the, of the deck chief, the crane operator, and then uh, various different personnel take part, uh, ROV personnel, science team, uh, to assist with the, with the launch. Um, it's a two-system ROV, so we launch Hercules first with a crane, uh, lift it overboard, and it gets released into the water, uh, stretches back aft of uh, Nautilus, and uh, then we uh, prepare to launch uh, Atalanta uh, using the, an A-frame, uh, another type of crane that's on the aft of the vessel. And once both systems are in the water, go down to 50 meters of depth and then we hand over control to the to the van here and uh, and uh, two systems are taken to depth. And for our viewers, will that recovery be on the live stream for them? Yes, yeah, yeah. So you can watch our launch and recovery on our live feed. Um, satellite feed number three is showing our deck um, with our deck frog prominently shown there as well. So, so you'll see that in reverse very soon. Yeah, you'll see the retrieval video. process coming up. Yeah. Um, and then we have a comment about going back to our guano. We keep going back to the <laughs> guano story that poo pee and similar excretions may sound gross, but they're extremely valuable commodities. And that's very true. They're used for everything from cleaning supply or ammonia, which ammonia is pee and to perfume, so ambergris, which is whale vomit, um, to textiles, dyes, um, fermented urine is used for dyeing and also making leather, and to building construction, so, and to valuable medicine, which is all very true. Don't forget about all the white sand beaches from the parrotfish. Oh yes, white sand beaches, uh, like parrotfish beaches? poop. Yeah. You wanna explain how our beaches are parrotfish poop? Uh, I mean, Parrotfish are just crunching and grinding things all the time, and they have this extra set of teeth basically in their throat. Um, it's called like pharyngeal gills, which is another crushing plate. So they're just releasing all these little tiny pieces um, in, the, in their feces. Um, if you've ever seen parrotfish, um, they, they excrete a lot. And so um, <laughs> not that a beach is 100% from that, but they are main contributors out there. Yes. Um, so from yeah. the parrotfish eating the coral, grinding it up, pooping yep. it out. And then we get a nice place to lay. Yeah. <laughs> so every time you're laying on that beach, just think of that parrotfish poop. <laughs> um, and then we have another question for our ROV pilots. Hercules versus Mesobot. Which one is your favorite to control? Well, uh, being the new boy here, I can't a taste <laughs> to that one. I well, it's uh, it's a bit of an apples and oranges situation as Mesobot is an uh, autonomous vehicle. It can be controlled. It can have it can trail a fiber behind it oh, yeah. and be controlled, but it's rarely done. Uh, Mesobot uh, is autonomous in that they program a, uh, uh, a, uh, a program into it to set to, to go to this depth, do this, take these samples, hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, it also is somewhat self uh, programming in that you can say if, if the light level reaches this, go down to this step, and then it can also be reprogrammed within its uh, uh, yeah. within right. its dive uh, by sending it other information uh, through an acoustic modem uh, to change its programming. Yeah. So it's uh, not suspended on a cable. It is it's uh, it flies I'm autonomously. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Three hundred meters. Uh, so it's very different. I'm only from looking at the uh, small seven. screen anyway. From that okay. help. Yes, definitely. Um, and then we also have a comment that MBARI found a tree fall with so much biology that they thought it was a whale fall as well. So we're not the only ones to have been faked out that they <laughs> even found two worms on this tree fall. And actually, in, 
in the zoomed in footage, if yeah. there were little white specks there, I wonder if they were. Yeah. There's shipworms, aren't there? Yeah. Uh, Does shipworms yeah. eat into wood and stuff like that a lot of times? So. Yeah, there was a lady that was collaborating with UH uh, last year, and she was asking for driftwood from all people just to, she studies shipworms, that's yeah. her thing. So it was like anybody who finds floating logs or trees, bring them to her. And she would sit there and find them all. And, it's yeah. it's crazy how long they are inside. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. They are a bivalve too. They're a mollusk, so I don't think they're actually a worm. Ouch. I think it's actually a mollusk. Yeah, I feel like marine inverts can fool you real quick with oh, what yeah. you think is a worm versus an animal <laughs> versus. It's just yeah. One of my favorite things to do is actually before we learn invertebrates, I just give my students a bunch of pictures and I'm like sort these how would you classify these <laughs> what groups would you put into them yeah. it's always fun to see what different groups and they put things in oh yeah that's a fun way to do it I like yeah that. and it's just our first way of introducing before classification just what do you guys think yeah you know? yep. and there's some weird animals in there especially in the ocean and then someone's also putting the recommendation for people that you should watch the quad camp for recovery instead of the feeds. So. Yeah, that's a good idea because we have uh, we have uh, cameras uh, from the, both of the vehicles yeah. uh, and cameras from the deck and even below the deck. Uh, uh, off the back of the, of the ship, we can see the vehicles coming up out of the water. And then you can also see us in the control room. I'll give right. you guys a wave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep, there you are. <laughs> but when we do recovery, then we'll switch between we'll the vehicle cameras and the deck cameras. You'll see the cranes in operation, the A-frame in operation, uh, and uh, my favorite, the uh, what we call the wire cam, which is... Uh, off the back of the transom and uh, looks out and shows the cable going into the water. It'll show Herc sailing by the back of the, the ship. It'll show uh, Atalanta coming up out of the water and onto the deck. And uh, if you watch all three of them on the quad, then you can see the whole thing happen. And so, for the MBARI acronym, it stands for Monterey Bay Research Institution mm. for the earlier one for the... Right, we usually call that MBARI. So I never, I always forget, like someone say, use all the letters, some like say it, it's just, it's so hard to keep track of. Well, the folks from Ambari say Ambari, so Ambari, okay. that's the way I've always known it. <laughs> and then we have a question, what is your favorite sea creature? So how about we go around, say everyone's favorite sea creature. My favorite one is a um, narwhal. I would mm. love to see a narwhal. Mm. But I'd have to spend about 20 grand. I'm a teacher, so. Yes. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. Cold where they're at. I need to break some ice. Yep. Dumbo octopus. Dumbo octopus? Oh, Grip I hope we get to see Grip one. Grip a toothless. <laughs> well, mine, is, mine are corals. I think yes. they're fascinating. So I've spent a career doing it. Yeah. But like, the fact that something can take light and salt and turn it into a reef that you can see from space, it's like, that's really incredible, I think. So for part of my interview process for coming on Nautilus, they asked us that question. If you were a plant, mineral, or animal, what would you be? And I said, I'd be a coral because then I'm all three. Yeah. And they're like, wow, Ooh. very wise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zach, what's your favorite animal? Oh, I don't know. It depends on the week, I feel like, for me. <laughs> um, I really enjoy cephalopods, like I talked earlier. Um, I love seeing. I mean, if we could see a, yeah, a dumbbell ox or something like that, I'd be, I'd be very ecstatic. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I, I, for a while, I was really, you know, passionate about finding large animals, taking pictures. So it's like, yeah. you know, whale sharks, things of that sort. I'll never be upset if I see one of those. I mean, that's yeah. always a great day. But oh, that'd here be in Hawaii, we're pretty spoiled. We, yeah. we get to see a lot of marine life and. Yeah takes a lot of time to find things too. That's the thing, if you're in the water, you'll see a lot of the things you want to see, uh, which is what's great about this. You know, it's a 12 hour dive. <laughs> you wouldn't see anything in two hours, right? It'd be a fraction of what we have, so. Dan, did you answer yet? I'm big whales. I you're like big the whales? I like the mammals, the whales, that type of stuff. But you know, I will tell you the eels, the eels were really nice on this dive. Yeah, yeah. the gulper eel. A lot of eels, the gulper eel, but there had a lot of blue ones out there, so we saw I don't know, 20, 30 of them yeah. uh, that throughout this dive. Yeah, there quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty fun. 
All right, how about the first row? What's your guys' favorite marine creature? Uh, yeah, I'll have to say, in honor of today, that gulper eel, I, I, don't, I can't stress enough. I mean, if you look online for photos or videos, you'd be pretty hard pressed. There's not, yeah. there's not many, and I think we have some of the best video of it um, from a few years ago. So even seeing one was, was really, really uh, special today. It was beautiful. Uh, yeah, for me, that gulper eel was pretty special. I, I do like an ostracod or a, a chiratufus, and, and uh, there's some stunning jellies and, out there as well. And, uh, yeah, there's, the diversity in the, in the ocean is just uh, absolutely incredible. To pick one would be uh, unfair to the rest, I feel. Yeah, <laughs> I pick a different one each time they ask. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the, definitely the highlight for today is the Gulper Eel, but uh, since I've been here every dive, I've uh, seen something new, something new and amazing, and, and learned. Uh, you were speaking about education and learning. Um, since I joined this vessel, it's been a, it's, an OET, it's been a learning experience nearly every, uh, every cruise. Yeah, it looks like we got some like the one we counter saw, current yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll... I think it'll, e yeah, I think it'll ease up uh, once we get there, but fight, you know, um, keeping it in the pocket's probably a good idea. Up. Hey, TJ, TJ, I'm going to, I'm going to exercise the iris control on uh, the Atlanta camera. All right, on our ascent, we're at 179 meters on our way up. I think I think we'll be all right. I think I think it's just this uh, subsea countercurrent mm -hmm. at the surface. We're not we're not seeing that. I think it'll uh, I think we'll be in the pocket. Yeah, it was like this and then this and nice. Some of those dives down near the equator, the equatorial countercurrent. You go down 30 meters, 180 degrees the other way. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like for launch is stressful, but recovery is like we've got to do a little math problem to try to figure <laughs> out like get it on back. Yeah. So here's um, yeah. someone coming in from far northern California asking about any undiscovered, undocumented species. Um, I had a. Yeah. It, it like must have the top yeah. of. Hercules yes. must have hit it yeah, and we yeah. just got inked. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why you watch the blue water recovery because yeah. what happens. You never know. I didn't highlight it though because I was like it was I don't know. Inked. Yeah. Inked. And back to the new species topic, it also depends who you talk to. You get in, in taxonomy, right, you hear people are groupers versus clusters. Depends who you talk to, whether it's a yeah. new species or not. Some yeah. will count the vertebrae and say, this is two more, that's what that's more than what our range said before, so this must be at least a new subspecies, or others are just thinking, oh, maybe we miscounted once, right? And so it, it, taxonomy is a really interesting thing, I feel It like. is, and um, it's very complicated, right? So like orcas, there's been some arguments too about orca whales of speciating it out between yeah. there's type A, type B, girl yeah. astrate, be like, because some orcas will eat primarily just mammals and yeah. other ones will eat fish. So is that enough to make it a different species yeah. or what? So like where you draw that line right. is kind of hard. So there we got another. Like, yeah, what is that? Is it a fish? Camera. Is it a zooplankton? Another thing Shrimp? that's really fun, or I think, with all of that is like cryptic speciation. So kind of building on that, it, like everything looks exactly the same. But for example, there's corals that look completely the same, but then they breed at different times. Yeah. So they're not, they're not uh, mixing in their populations and then during bleaching events like one of those might die and the other one might not so one might be more heat resistant uh, and as far as like you know traditional taxonomy goes it's the same um, but yeah if those if those populations are mixing um, you could have sort of cryptic species there that are hiding a lot of diversity and um, Unfortunately, in the case of those corals, we might be losing some of those cryptic species. 
um, and sort of selecting for the, the sturdier ones. So there's so much that we don't know uh, about, you know, discovering new species and, will, yeah. um, you know, really just kind of highlights this need for continued exploration and science to better understand the world that, as it keeps yeah. changing. We're at about 80 meters. So one last quick question before, um, before we stop off for our chat to let our everyone concentrate. But which one is easier, launch or recovery of our ROVs? Anyone have an answer for that? Are they equally as difficult? I personally think recovery, because you got to get everything hooked up, you know, when yeah. you launch, you just let it go. Yeah. Like the recovery, you got to get, it, they're all free floating, so you got to get them back hooked up, the lines, and bring back on board, and, you know, so it's just a lot more interaction you have, other yeah. than just release, release, release. Both of them are pretty yeah. stress-inducing. You have a lot of money swinging around. <laughs> it's a very easy way to, I got experience going on the back deck today and help launch. And it was really fun and interesting getting a close up view, but lots of different ways you can get hurt back there. Yeah. All right, we're right about it. Oh, there's meters. squid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, keep an eye for the squid. There's a handful of squid. This is when the tuna show up now. Come and hunt the squid for us. Yeah. All right, we're at the five meters. That's All a right. squad of squid. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and have a good night, and tune in tomorrow morning. This is Daniela Grafay signing off. That I'll stop five zero meters. Break, break, bridge, bridge, back deck. Permission to go ahead and retrieve Atalanta and Hercules. Charlie to recover. Captain.